year into the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, hopefully. And uh, Friday mornings for the better part of that year, we have been visiting with folks from Imperial County and getting some updated information. And today, no different. We will be visiting with Rocio Riz, Deputy Director of the Community Health Division of the Imperial County Public Health Department, and with Alvaro Ramirez, Safety and Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the Imperial County Office of Education. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things, such as, whoa, we made it to red. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Rocio, Imperial County being a tier, uh, that's a good thing. What does what does that mean? What are we what are we doing? What are we able to do? Good morning, Carol. Thank you. Yes, we're very excited um, that Imperial County finally met our uh, we met the red tier metrics. And so, what does that mean? Um, uh, although we continue to to be careful and ensure that uh, we want to make sure that the spread of, of COVID-19 continues to be limited. We are able to open up a little bit further from where we were when we were in the purple. Some examples of um, that we're able to do now is, for example, restaurants can now open indoors at a 25% capacity or up to 100 people, whichever is less. Um, another thing that may see shopping centers like the mall, uh, they're able to open up up to fit with 50% capacity and have a reduced capacity in the food court areas uh, prior to, and, and the purple tier, the, the food court areas were, were closed. Uh, so that's something that they're able to do as well. Uh, another thing that we get to see is, um, the gyms, gyms are able and fitness centers are able to open up indoors at a uh, reduced capacity of 10% is something else that we've seen. Um, museums are able to open up indoors as well with a maximum capacity of 25%. Uh, movie theaters are also able to open indoors with modifications and a maximum capacity of 25% or 100 people, whichever is fewer. And so those are some of like some of the more common areas that uh, we see in uh, the major changes uh, going from the purple to the red tier. Of course, we continue with modifications throughout the different uh, sectors. We want to ensure and remind people that although um, although we move into some of these tiers, we want to continue to reduce the spread. So it's important to continue to practice the, those safety practices that we've been doing, such as the face covering um, in the public places, frequent hand washing, and the physical distancing. I know that another huge impact or a uh, change is within the school. So Alvaro can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but with, with the red tier, uh, schools K-12 can open up um, further for in-person instruction. Um, of course, there are some requirements that they do have to meet uh, as well. Okay. And uh, Alvaro, uh, you're with the Imperial County Office of Education. And, um, you know, in effect... Uh, Imperial County, last I counted, it's something like 15 or 17 separate districts. So uh, you're trying to bring uh, a little bit of cohesion to uh, what they're able to do? Uh, so good morning, Carol, and thank you so much for the invitation today. I think it's really important for us to continue to communicate with our community. Uh, like Rocio said, these are truly exciting times once we've been able to transition to the red tier and like Rocio mentioned, it is now allowable for our 17 school districts to uh, bring back students for in-person services. You know, our schools never really closed. They, they transitioned to a distance learning almost a year to the day. And it, it is exciting to see that the opportunities to be able to bring students back on campus are, are, are getting, are increasing. Students have been able to come back on campus for limited services, some assessments, or, or to work in small cohorts. Uh, but this really allows schools to expand their efforts uh, more widespread. 
Now, this will be, like you mentioned, a district by district decision. Um, it'll be based off of resources they have available, how far they are in their planning efforts, what their community needs, and the work with their respective stakeholders. So it will look a little bit different from district to district. Um, you know, school leadership in Imperial County took a very proactive steps very early on in the pandemic. And all of uh, Imperial County superintendents have met on a weekly basis to discuss the the evolution of COVID, the evolution of guidance, and how it's going to impact the respective school districts. Uh, so we are very, very excited. Uh, like Rocio mentioned, there are some things that schools need to continue to focus on and make sure that they're in compliance with. And really, when you look at it, there are different mitigation strategies that the schools must have. And uh, in summary, those will be around the use of face coverings on campus, uh, doing their best to make sure that students and staff are in stable groups, uh, having protocols and processes in place where, where staff and students can, can maintain physical distancing as necessary, uh, ensuring that facilities have adequate ventilation, uh, practices around hand hygiene, uh, making sure that they have solid screening, uh, daily screening uh, processes uh, for both students and staff, and having the capacity to make sure that they can uh, follow up with any type of exposures in the classroom whether that be, you know, through contact tracing efforts and collaboration with the public health department, as well as uh, making sure that they have resources available or identified uh, for testing uh, in case there is any type of exposure or outbreak in the classroom. So schools are definitely gearing up. They've been doing a lot of work over the past couple months, and uh, different school districts will be communicating with their respective communities in reference to the evolution of their plans and their timelines, uh, but very, very excited to have the opportunity to bring kiddos back on campus. Okay, I, I don't know who's more excited, the kids, the teachers, or the parents. And uh, uh, We don't know either. So, and, and as you pointed out, uh, direction coming from, or help coming from the Imperial County Office of Education, but it is a district decision on uh, what they're able to do. So that uh, absolutely it will be a district by district decision. Yeah, that uh, your district may vary. OK, and an area that a lot of people are um, are looking at uh, sports activities. And uh, we understand uh, high school football with a very limited uh, intra valley schedule will be getting underway, as well as baseball, softball, and uh, other, I'm not going to call baseball and softball non-contact because I've played it too many years and know there is contact, but uh, uh, what kind of direction is coming down on this? Uh, so Carol, as with so many other things with COVID, the, the guidance continues to evolve. Uh, as of today, they, they have separated the different sports into different categories, whether it's uh, low, moderate, or high contact. And the latest information that we heard is that, indeed, some high contact sports can be can be played, which is how we saw the announcement and the the limited, uh, limited competition that will happen in Imperial County. We are excited, and we anticipate additional guidance to come out in the next couple of weeks. And hopefully, in addition to the sports that have already been announced by by our partner districts, uh, there will be additional opportunities for the students. And one of the things that uh, we have pointed out from uh, pretty much the very beginning, so much direction coming out of Sacramento, and uh, that's a moving target. Yeah, I, it seems every time you turn around, uh, well, we changed this metric, or we've changed that rule. Okay, now coming out of the White House, it's... Uh, by May 1st, every every adult who wants a vaccine will be able to get one. And uh, Rocio, coming back to you, uh, one of the issues obviously in the Valley with the vaccine is getting it out of Sacramento down to uh, Imperial County Arms. Uh, are we seeing any changes, any differences there? Um, yes, Carol, it, and, and it, it's true. There are changes every day, and it's sometimes hard to keep up with those changes. But I think what's important to note also is that every day we learn something new, and every day we try to improve the processes, whether it comes from the federal, the state, or the local locals trying to implement some of these changes. As it relates to vaccine, um, we've started to see an increase of vaccine this week. We got 
um, 8,500 vaccines allocated to Imperial County. And we expect uh, similar numbers to continue throughout the next, hopefully in the next week. So there, um, the expansion of availability and access to vaccine has increased in Imperial County. There's at least 20 providers that are making vaccine available throughout um, the county, whether it's pharmacies, uh, private medical providers, clinics, uh, and other partners. So you can go into our website at www.icphc.org slash COVID-19 vaccine to find the list of providers that have vaccine available. The other thing that uh, we are currently onboarding and turning into is what we call My Turn. My turn is a notification system where people can register to be notified when it's their turn to get vaccinated because we can't keep up with the information um, and it continues to change, as well as to check if they're already eligible to get the vaccine in the community. And this will also be the, a system that will be used by providers uh, where people can actually make their appointments to receive the vaccine based on vaccine availability. Imperial County is currently, uh, will begin using my turn as of next week. Um, they're starting appointments should start showing up this week or have been showing up this week. And then, uh, we, that's some, that's the system that we'll be using, uh, going forward. And there's also several providers that you'll be able to find on my turn, uh, once you look into the location and the zip code, uh, with that information. Okay. So that's how that's that's a way to uh, find out what's going on and and get that information. And my suggestion, and we have, and I know the uh, health department has uh, made this suggestion, is sign up and register on every conceivable website. My turn is basically useless at this point. Uh, I went on the site this morning, and it's almost impossible to navigate into my turn and Imperial County is not on their system yet. Uh, as I understand, it's just LA and San Diego counties at this point. Um, according to the governor, everybody will be there next week. Um, you know, but you know, clinic is de salut, uh, you know, register there, register with uh, the pharmacies. Uh, I know CVS, Walgreens, um, Vons, I believe pharmacies will have, um, vaccines and uh, go to their sites and register uh, you know if you are that uh, anxious about getting the vaccine you've got to do a little bit of work there or have uh, a, a grandkid <laughs> or somebody that's a little bit more tech savvy um, do some of that work for you to get there yes, so, and like i said the listing of the providers are on our website so people can go in there and if there's a direct link where people can make a specific appointment, it is made available through the, through that site as well. It does work. So, yes. but uh, again, you know, the state's my turn at this point, it, it's um, not a lot of help in Imperial County. And from what I've heard, not a lot of help in San Diego or LA County, but it's what we have. Okay. Did we miss anything? Are we ready? Okay, I know one of the things, um, small gatherings are now permitted, right? Small private gatherings are allowed outdoors and indoors with some modifications. Uh, mask and physical distancing is still required. Um, the recommendation is for no more than three separate households to attend, including the host. And, and the recommendation is for gatherings uh, should be two hours or less. Of course, always reminding people if anybody has experienced any symptoms to not attend or those with high risk or severe illness, especially if they have not been uh, vaccinated to also not attend. Uh, so, you know, it, it does allow for, you know, the expansion of those private gatherings before we used to hear only outdoors. Now, um, the recommendation does include or the allowance does include indoors as well. Okay, so you can get together with a few friends yeah. and family as long as you uh, wear the mask, socially distance, and uh, be healthy. Yeah. Okay, um, we appreciate the visit today. 
Rocio Ramirez, Deputy Director of the Community Health Division of Imperial County Public Health Department, and Alvaro Ramirez, Safety and Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the Imperial County Office of Education, both of whom have been working to address the, uh, the pandemic. Hopefully, uh, you know, that light at the end of the tunnel is getting a little bit brighter and it's not a locomotive coming towards us. So we're moving in the right direction. We appreciate the visit today and uh, you guys have a great weekend. You too, Carol. Thank you so much. And everybody continue to stay safe. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Carol. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention how appreciative we are of our ongoing collaboration with the public health department. They have been an integral part of us, of helping us interpret the guidance uh, as it's evolved so rapidly. So a uh, very special thank you to them. Kind of learning on the fly, right? Sure are. <laughs> okay. You guys be good and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. The Imperial Valley's best oldies on the radio. Imperial County Air Pollution Control District provides you with air quality reports daily. How is your air quality today? Check current air quality conditions in Imperial County at imperialvalleyair.org. You can sign up for free air quality alerts to be delivered directly to your email address, or you can download the Air Quality Alert app to your mobile device today. Stay informed with Imperial County Air Pollution Control District.